What's going on YouTube, Ferocity here. And today I want to talk about the Keemstar versus H3H3 drama. This is that classic YouTube drama from like 2014, 2015, where it's just two content creators going at it because they don't like each other. And I love it. I eat this stuff up. This reminded me of like the edgy YouTube before the adpocalypse where people just released good content. This was good content. More so H3H3 side where Keemstar kind of just tried to defend himself but didn't really do a great job of it. Regardless of that, H3H3 framed Keemstar in a very negative light. And there's five main points I took from these three videos that I want to talk about today. So let's just get started. Keemstar a few years ago misidentified a man to be a child predator. That's a no-no. You, you, no, you don't do that. So I, I guess what happened was a member of his news team thought he recognized, you know, saw a picture of a child predator, thought it was a RuneScape streamer, brought that to Keem. Keem reported it on Drum Alert. And then realized he got it wrong because everybody flooded this guy's stream, completely ruined his time. And then Keem came out and apologized. So you think, okay, this is a feel-good story. Like, Keem made a mistake and then he apologized for it. But now, a few years later, he won't take responsibility for it. This man still has people coming at him claiming he's a child predator. Because you threw it out there on the internet. And what gets put out on the internet normally stays there forever. You know, you don't really get rid of things very easily. And when you come up with an allegation as harsh as child predator, people aren't going to forget. And it kind of seems that Keemstar forgets that, that he was in the wrong here. And this man has mentioned on numerous occasions that Keemstar ruined his life. And I don't blame him. That's a pretty heinous thing to be accused of. But Keemstar pretends it doesn't happen, that it's not his fault. Not only is it irresponsible, immature to just not take the responsibility there, like how do you look at this man and say, yeah, people are still calling you a child predator. Guess, guess who started that rumor? Oh, that was me. I'm sorry. Like just take some responsibility for your actions. You can admit you're wrong. That's not... That's not, that doesn't mean you're weak. If, if you're wrong, it doesn't mean you're weak. I'm reading this book by Jocko Wilnick called Extreme Ownership, and it's a bunch of war stories. But the point of the book is own up to your mistake. Take responsibility. That's one of the main themes of the book is just people are going to respect you if you just own things, if you own your mistakes, if you own your decisions, own your opinions. People are going to respect you more than just flip-flopping and, and being an asshole. And this is how I feel about this story, is it still pisses me off to this day. Like, I thought it was all well and good. I thought they were on okay terms. And then all of a sudden you see, oh, I, I'm not the reason your life sucks. Screw you, man. Like, screw you, Keem. Just admit you're wrong, take responsibility for it, and understand that even, you know, many years after the original incident there are going to be still people that see your original video or understand that, yeah, I've heard this guy's child predator, must be a child predator. Like, yeah, I, I've realized at this point this man is not, but what if somebody just watched that one video then goes to his Twitch, sees this guy, and then is like, that guy's a child predator, why is he still streaming? Main point there, take responsibility. Ethan brought up doxing and swatting. Now, obviously, for those that may or may not know, um, normally if you're here, you're probably an H3H3 fan, unless you're a Keemstar fan, in which case, I'm sorry. But H3H3 was swatted. They actually had to move houses, for those who don't know that, um, because he mentioned it in a video. But he was swatted. Swatting is a terrible thing. It's actually led to the death of a man. And Keemstar seems to be totally okay with doxing. And what does doxing do? It leads to swatting because you get people's addresses, you learn where they live, and then all it takes is one phone call to local police and saying that someone's holding a family hostage and all of a sudden the SWAT team shows up, kicks down your door, and ruins your time streaming. If you think 
that swatting is cool or swatting is funny. You are a garbage human being and you deserve to live in a hole so far underneath this beautiful earth that we have because that's where you belong. You don't belong. You don't deserve to enjoy the things that make life great because you are a garbage human being. And this goes along the same line as doxing. What are you? A 12 year old? An ex-girlfriend who's jealous that you need to find out someone's information? What people have privacy, man. What? Yeah, it'd be cool to meet a celebrity. It would be awesome to meet a celebrity. Would I go around trying to find their personal information? No, because they have that right to privacy. What are you doing doxing people? And then to come out and say, well, well I, I just suggested it. Other people do what they want with the information. This again comes back to my first point. You're an adult. Take some responsibility for your actions. You have an impressionable fan base. To think that Keemstar's fan base is mostly 19 to 23 year olds is generous. They're all under 18 for the most part. And yeah, you know, there, there is probably some of his demographic that's 19 to 25. But you know what? The human brain still hasn't fully developed until 25. So most 25, 26 to 35 year olds aren't watching Keemstar's content. Um, or they can, you know, put two and two together that, yeah, doxing people is not a good thing. But when you have young, impressionable pe pe people thinking that, yeah, this is how you get at people who you don't like, you dox them. That's a terrible precedent to set. And then it leads to swatting. It leads to, you know, people showing up at people's doors. It leads to major problems. And I, for one, hate it. How would you like, Keem? Your information was just out there and people started showing up in your backyard. People started showing up to your house every day. You'd get pretty fucking annoyed, wouldn't you? you you'd, you'd be a little pissed off. Yeah, that's what I thought. You would be. That's the problem I have. Is the fact that it's only a problem when it happens to him. Other than that, hey, it's totally fine. I think you're 40 years old. Maybe you're 35. Regardless, age doesn't matter. Your father, you should learn that these are childish tactics and be better. Be better. Be an advocate against swanning. Be an advocate against doxing instead of thinking it's okay. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Next is the Bashiverse misallegations. Now, this came out in the second H3H3 video where it showed Keemstar misstating ages of women, of a, a girl that Bashiverse allegedly had sexual relations with or dated. First off, I am fine with outing predators. I am fine with outing sexual deviants. What I'm not fine with is getting information wrong. This is a very clear case of, I want to be first to the story. I don't care if the information is correct. I'm just going to throw it out there. And that's what Keem did. And the name of the, the girl, or not the name, the age of the girl changed numerous times. Oh, she's 13. Oh, no, she's 15. No, she was 14. No. Oh, my God. She was 16. No, nope, no, nope, she was 12. No, nope, 14. This guy flip-flopped information way too often. That's a problem. You run a news channel. Get the story right. Tease the story. Like, I'm not here. I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you how to run your channel. It's much more successful than mine is. Don't get me wrong. But what I will say is, you are trying to out somebody as a sexual predator, but you're not going to get the story right. That, to me, is a problem. Make sure you get it right. I could touch on the Tabuscus thing, but I don't know enough about it. But once again, if you're going to make allegations, just make sure you get it right. Don't flip-flop all the time. Take some responsibility. Weird. What a theme. <laughs> Next is Etika, Fuzi, and mental health. It is very clear that Keem has some very archaic thoughts when it comes to mental health. He's clearly never had to deal with mental health. He said some very mm, immature things to Etika. It was very clear that Etika was a fan of Drama Alert and Keemstar. And I actually believe that his appearance on Drama Alert was a little bit dramatized. Why wouldn't it be? This is the guy you idolize. This, you're a fan of this guy's content. 
Would you not want to make a big splash on there? You know it's going to do wonders for you because people are going to come to your channel. People are going to subscribe. It's a great marketing tool. I totally get it, especially if you're a fan of Keem. Hey, man, do you want to do this together? It'll just boom for views. All my guys will come watch you. Some of your guys will come watch me. It's a good cross-marketing scheme. Great, great, great idea. But what I will also not deny is that Etika clearly had some mental problems and his mental health wasn't all there. And rhetoric like Keemstar's of just stop being sad doesn't work. Depression isn't just sadness. Depression is a lot of things. It's the inability to feel comfortable with yourself and then have the having the anxiety creep in. The idea of mental health not being a thing is, is very incorrect and very archaic, but the stop being sad is also along the same lines. I don't wish these things upon anyone. It is very clear that Etika had problems and to have somebody that you look up to have the vocabulary, the verbiage, the rhetoric that Keemstar has towards mental health would not help your mental health. I'm not saying his words were direct result or directly impacted Etika's decision to take his life. I don't believe that, but I also don't believe it helped. If Keemstar was a true friend to Etika, wouldn't you reach out if you knew something was wrong? And that's what people would do in that situation. That's what I would do, at least. Like, you would go to that person and say, Hey, man, everything okay? Do you want to talk about something? You clearly want to keep the guy around. So if you're a true friend to somebody, like, you would reach out. Instead of saying that he's a having a manic state and saying, Well, it's not as bad as Fousey. That's a problem. And I'm going to touch on FouseyTube here as well. I'm not a fan of Fousey. Never watched his content. I Obviously, I've seen the, the, the takedown videos on him. There's clearly something wrong with his mental health there as well. And to just make a three-part series about this man, who's clearly going through a tough time, and to not mention at any point that, yeah, this guy's having a tough go right now, uh, is irresponsible. And it is detrimental to people's mental health. And I'm not saying that it's going to directly impact FouseyTube. But him saying that I wanted to kill myself because of the words that you said. That's powerful. And that would make me think twice. If somebody ever said that to me. I'd be like, holy crap. I'm a terrible human being. Because your words should not directly impact someone else's life. To the point that they want to take it. Um, the fact that that didn't make you reflect is, is ridiculous. Um... But when it comes to Etika, it's very clear there was something a miss, a, a myth, a, something wrong there. And it's just tough to talk about. Holy crap! Um, not be like I wasn't a fan of Etika by any means, but it's just this idea that you know he has such a big platform. Keem does, and he could have been such a a champion for mental health problems, and he could have such influence on people. It's just such a shame that he continues to have these archaic thoughts. And what he needs to do is come out and talk about it. And you'd think that maybe over time his thoughts have changed, but it was true from Boogie's um, tweet where, yeah, they reached out, they probably had a good conversation, but the idea of just stop being sad still rings so true in his head because that's what he believes. And it's so incorrect. And, you know, I've dealt with this stuff. It's not fun. It's not fun to get out of your own, like, to, to just be trapped in your own head having the weight of your shoulders. And some of it is circumstance. Some of it you put on yourself for sure, and I'm not denying that. But you have to find a way, and everybody's different. The just stop being sad doesn't work. And if you are having problems, find centers of influence to reach out to. That's what I believe. And... Keem could have that opportunity to be that person and he could have come on with his response video instead of trying to attack and assassinate H3, H3, instead of trying to frame himself as the good guy. What he could have done is come out and said, guys, I have said bad things towards the mental health community. And, and he in part said that, but he didn't try to change the narrative. That is, just stop being sad. He could have changed the narrative to be, this is my stance on mental health. 
you know, in Etika's memory, this is because of the impact his life had on me, because they were friends, but no, no, it's, I'm going to assassinate this character, I'm going to frame the argument completely incorrectly that, I don't think H3 tried to frame it as, he caused Etika to kill himself, it's, no, it's, rhetoric that he uses does not help people in Etika's state, it's not helpful, it's not influential, if anything, it has a negative impact. That's the point he was getting across. And take some responsibility, reflect and understand that, yeah, saying the things like, oh, it's a simulation, so you should just jump. Saying something like that doesn't help anyone's situation. Hell, and if you're somebody who believes this is a simulation, enjoy it for what it is. Have you had sex? That thing is pretty fun. Yeah. Falling in love? Holy crap. Having an emotional connection with someone? That's incredible. Have you ever held a baby? Have you ever pet a dog? If this is all a simulation, it's a pretty damn good one. I've played enough video games to know there's some pretty shitty simulations out there. I get to pet a dog? Are you kidding me? That's 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 the simulation I get to live in. I'm I'm totally okay with that. I get to I get to hold a newborn? Come on. That's what I'm all about. But yeah, it's uh it's very negative. It's poor thought process. And I, I have a huge problem with it. So, yeah, I would love to see him come out and champion this. Regardless, the last point I wanted to touch on was the idea of going after someone's sponsors. In this case, G Fuel. Now, we all know Keemstar has stepped away from G Fuel, whether G Fuel dropped him or he chose to personally walk away from it. Is a moot point. Doesn't matter. He's no longer with them for the time being. Judging by the type of businessman Keemstar is, I would not be surprised if he has some sort of stake in that company. Just judging by the type of person he is. Because despite of how terrible of a person he is, he's a good business person. He understands how to make money. He's done a very good job. He's fallen off of YouTube and come back so many times. He knows what he's doing. So let's not, uh, let's not pretend that doesn't exist. But regardless, I have a huge problem with this notion of this. I don't like this guy and he's sponsored by this company. So now I don't like this company. I have never looked at sponsorships and said that sponsorships are a direct endorsement of someone's content. I've looked at it as this person is in my tar this person's target audience or demographic is the same as my target demographic. So I'm going to sponsor him because I'm going to reach the people and direct market to them. It seems like a win-win. I give this person some money, they create the content that they want to create that gets their demographic in. And then boom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We gotta make some money. I have the ability to separate content from sponsor because I look at the business side of things and understand that, yeah, if you want to make the most money, you find people that are reaching out to your target demographic and you reach out to them, you give them money and thus then your target demographic sees more of your brand. Very simple marketing. I get it that you want to attack people. And honestly, I think part of this comes from YouTube's very strict and, and swift moves with the adpocalypse because this precedent should never be there that your money can be gone tomorrow because of one bad thing. Like granted, when Tiger Woods did what he did, everybody dropped him except for Nike. Like he was sponsored by Buick. He was sponsored by um, Pepsi. I don't remember, but he had a lot of endorsements and everyone dropped him except for Nike. And look at that now, paying dividends. I have never once looked at it and said, this company sponsors this person, you know, like with Matthew, McCon Matthew McConaughey and Lincoln. Let's say tomorrow Matthew McConaughey comes out that he's done something heinous in his past, tax evasion or something like that. Um, would I blame Buick for sponsoring him or like having him in their videos? No, not at all. Man, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. And maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm I'm the minority here. But realistically, a company is just trying to reach their target demographic. And this content creator is just trying to make money. And I may not like Keemstar, but he's damn good at pushing G Fuel. There's a lot of people that bought G Fuel because of him. So that's just the way I feel. I, I really I really hate the idea of going after people's sponsors. I really think it's silly. 
but that's just me. I'm not in their shoes, obviously. Um, I'd feel really bad if somebody went after a sponsor of mine if I had one. Um, speaking of which, this video was by... No, just kidding. Uh, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Just kidding. That'd be hilarious. They're, they're guerrilla marketing at its finest. Regardless. Um, don't want to get too off track. Got to end this video. It's getting a little long. Um, but yeah, just I, I'm very much against going after sponsors. There you go. That's my point. So, in conclusion... I think Keem needs to just take more responsibility for his actions. Understand that he screwed up in the past and just kind of try to not sweep it under the rug. Acknowledge it. Say, yeah, I'm going to continue to be better. Instead of basically admitting it at one point and then a year later saying, well, <laughs> it was a year ago. You're really still blaming me for these problems? Yeah, I am. I, I really am. Like, if somebody stole $10,000 from you, or let's, okay, let's, let's beef it up a little bit. Say your retirement, your retirement savings were like five hundred grand, and someone stole that from you. And then, like ten years later, when you're trying to retire, that person came and they're like, "Man, why aren't you retired yet?" Well, you kind of stole five hundred grand from me. Yeah, but, but like that was ten years ago, dude. Like you can't keep blaming me for this. That's what it's like. That is the analogy I'm going with, and that's the type of person that Keemstar is. He would take money from you and then blame you later for asking why you don't have enough money. And that's my conclusion today. Keemstar takes some more responsibility. Understand you've done some things in the past that are not good and grow from it. And if you're somebody defending Keem and saying that, oh, this just happened in the past and everybody knew about this, does not change the fact that he should take some responsibility. Okay? There. We're going to end it there. We're going to end it there. Perfect. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this drama. Whose side are you on? I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.